Timing is really challenging on standardized tests, especially in a testing environment. Remember that the GRE is just one component of your act, of your profile really as an applicant, right? So every program differs and your GRE is going to play a different role in every program you apply to. So once you know what your score is, basically going off of where Jer Erica left us off, you, you know what score you're going to get. You've been taking those practice tests. You basically know what to expect. Now is the time to create a strategy that is responsive to that. So we know what score we're coming in at. We basically know we're going to be in that ballpark. So now are the essays something that you need to really focus on? Is that something where you're really going to demonstrate that you're prepared for the program? You can speak to your other assets as a researcher, as a scholar, um, as an educator, perhaps, that are going to kind of beef up your, your application if your GRE is, say, not as competitive, right? Um, now, let's say you have a very competitive GRE score. I just want to emphasize that doesn't mean that you should overlook the essays. The essays are still a very, very, very important component. I would probably say the most important component of the application. That is where you're going to demonstrate who you are, your interests. And to be honest, there are some students that apply that do not have the test score that is required for admittance. Yet their essays and their interview and perhaps the long form answer questions really speak to themselves as an applicant and their preparedness and they will land an interview and it's very possible that they will be admitted. So I think with this, it's important to know when to address a low score if you do have one um, and when to highlight other aspects of your application. So one question you might ask if you call a department and you speak to an advisor is, you know, what are those typical scores of graduate students who are accepted in the past couple years? And let's say you're ranking right below that. Perhaps you won't address it because you know you're still right in the pool. Now, if you're if you're kind of scoring significantly below that, then I would address it. Right. Because it is kind of almost like the elephant in the room. So you don't have the score of most applicants, accepted applicants into our program. Why are you still prepared? Why are you still ready to take on the research and the caliber of this research and the rigor at this time, right? You wanna be transparent and you wanna be able to address that because that's exactly what the review committee is going to be thinking and wondering about you as an applicant. So I hope that makes sense. Is once you have that score, then you can start to develop a strategy for each program that is responsive to where it is that you're ranking on their requirements. Thank you so much, B. So now that we've got, okay, we have the expectation of realistically where we can go with our score. We have the understanding that, okay, based on that, we have to have a full application plan to make sure we're addressing a low score if we need to, to make sure other aspects of our application are shining, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we're considering that the GRE is just one aspect, but it is an aspect, right? Maybe we've gotten to the point where we go, okay, I do need to improve my score because it is the elephant in the room. Or maybe we're trying to, we're really trying to make our application particularly shine. Maybe the thing that we are trying to have stand out is that score, right? We want to, within our expectations, right, within the expectation of this is when I need my score by, this is what I want it to be realistically, this is how much time I can study per week, we want to optimize our GRE score. So we want to make sure that we can deliver within those expectations. So what are the things that are going to be most important? Once we have, all right, expectations that we're going to optimize our GRE scores within them, we're going to make the most of that opportunity. So I'm going to go through what I think are the most important things to make sure your GRE score is the best it can be. The most important things. So the first thing that I think is important for optimizing your GRE score and that I've seen from my students is one of the most critical pieces and that boosts their scores the most is locking in your timing strategy. 
Timing is really challenging on standardized tests, especially in a testing environment, but it is absolutely critical, especially with an adaptive test like the GRE. The way the GRE algorithm works is that there are two sections for quant or math, and there are two sections for verbal, and your performance or the number of questions you get right in the first section of quant determines what sorts of questions you get in the second portion. Same thing for verbal. And what you want to do is you want to be trying to get as many questions in that first section right so that you get harder questions in that second section. And then when you have harder questions, that raises your score, especially if you get more of them right. So we want to do as best we can within an individual section. So how do we do that? Well, the really great thing about a section adaptive algorithm is that you can skip around within a section. I see a lot of students make the mistake of really just getting stuck on a question, spending five minutes, seven minutes, even four minutes, three minutes, too many minutes on an individual question. And when you're spending time on that question, you are taking time actively away from other questions. So the absolute most important strategy for your timing is to skip hard questions because you can come back to them. You can pop a little flag on those questions. And then when you get to the end of the section, you can come back. So don't waste your time on questions that are taking too much of it. Just flag it and come back later. That's going to ensure that you have time to get the to the questions that are going to be easier for you. And then maybe you don't have time for the questions that are harder. The questions that take the longest are usually the ones you get wrong anyway. So that's a good idea. So you can come back at the end, do your best. Maybe a fresh set of eyes gets you the correct answer, or maybe it doesn't and you guess. That is fine. As long as we have an answer in for every question, we are good to go. So lock in your timing strategy. That is the absolute most important thing. More important than content, more important than anything, timing.